Extroversion and Introversion, Wikipedia Audio The trait of extroversion-introversion is a central dimension of human personality theories. The terms introversion and extroversion were popularized by Carl Jung, although both the popular understanding and psychological usage differ from his original intent. Extroversion tends to be manifested in outgoing, talkative, energetic behavior, whereas introversion is manifested in more reserved and solitary behavior. Virtually all comprehensive models of personality include these concepts in various forms. Examples include the Big Five model, Jung's analytical psychology, Hans Eisenk's three-factor model, Raymond Cattell's 16 personality factors, the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, and the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. Extroversion and introversion are typically viewed as a single continuum, so to be high in one necessitates being low in the other. Carl Jung and the developers of the Myers-Briggs type indicator provide a different perspective and suggest that everyone has both an extrovert side and an introverted side, with one being more dominant than the other. Rather than focusing on interpersonal behavior, however, Jung defined introversion as an attitude type characterized by orientation in life through subjective psychic contents and extroversion as an attitude type characterized by concentration of interest on the external object. Extroversion is the state of primarily obtaining gratification from outside oneself. Extroverts tend to enjoy human interactions and to be enthusiastic, talkative, assertive, and gregarious. Extroverts are energized and thrive off being around other people. They take pleasure in activities that involve large social gatherings, such as parties, community activities, public demonstrations, and business or political groups. They also tend to work well in groups. An extrovert person is likely to enjoy time spent with people and find less reward in time spent alone. They tend to be energized when around other people, and they are more prone to boredom when they are by themselves. Varieties Introversion is the state of being predominantly interested in one's own mental self. Introverts are typically perceived as more reserved or reflective. Some popular psychologists have characterized introverts as people whose energy tends to expand through reflection and dwindle during interaction. This is similar to Jung's view, although he focused on mental energy rather than physical energy. Few modern conceptions make this distinction. Introverts often take pleasure in solitary activities such as reading, writing, using computers, hiking and fishing. The archetypal artist, writer, sculptor, scientist, engineer, composer, and inventor are all highly introverted. An introvert is likely to enjoy time spent alone and find less reward in time spent with large groups of people, though they may enjoy interactions with close friends. Trust is usually an issue of significance. A virtue of utmost importance to introverts is choosing a worthy companion. They prefer to concentrate on a single activity at a time and like to observe situations before they participate, especially observed in developing children and adolescents. They are more analytical before speaking. Introverts are easily overwhelmed by too much stimulation from social gatherings and engagement, Introversion having even been defined by some in terms of a preference for a quiet, more minimally stimulating external environment. Mistaking introversion for shyness is a common error. Introversion is a preference, while shyness stems from distress. Introverts prefer solitary to social activities, but do not necessarily fear social encounters like shy people do. Susan Cain argues in Quiet, 
the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking that modern Western culture misjudges the capabilities of introverted people, leading to a waste of talent, energy, and happiness. Kane describes how society is biased against introverts, and that, with people being taught from childhood that to be sociable is to be happy, introversion is now considered somewhere between a disappointment and pathology. In contrast, Kane says that introversion is not a second-class trait but that both introverts and extroverts enrich society, with examples including the introverts J.K. Rowling, Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Seuss, W.B. Yeats, Steven Spielberg, and Larry Page. Although many people view being introverted or extroverted as mutually exclusive, most contemporary trait theories measure levels of extroversion-introversion as part of a single, continuous dimension of personality, with some scores near one end, and others near the halfway mark. Ambiversion is falling more or less directly in the middle. An ambivert is moderately comfortable with groups and social interaction, but also relishes time alone, away from a crowd. Susan Cain's 2012 book Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking reports that studies indicate 33-50% of the American population are introverts. Particular subpopulations have higher prevalence, with a 6,000 subject MBTI based survey indicating that 60% of attorneys, and 90% of intellectual property attorneys, are introverts. The extent of extroversion and introversion is most commonly assessed through self report measures, although peer reports and third party observation can also be used. Self-report measures are either lexical or based on statements. The type of measure is determined by an assessment of psychometric properties and the time and space constraints of the research being undertaken. Lexical measures use individual adjectives that reflect extrovert and introvert traits, such as outgoing, talkative, reserved, and quiet. Words representing introversion are reverse-coded to create composite measures of extroversion-slash-introversion running on a continuum. Goldberg developed a 20-word measure as part of his 100-word Big Five markers. Saucier developed a briefer 8-word measure as part of his 40-word mini-markers. However, the psychometric properties of Saucier's original mini-markers have been found suboptimal with samples outside of North America. As a result, a systematically revised measure was developed to have superior psychometric properties, the International English Mini-Markers. The International English Mini-Markers has good internal consistency reliabilities and other validity for assessing extroversion-slash-introversion and other five-factor personality dimensions, both within and, especially, without American populations. Internal consistency reliability of the extroversion measure for native English speakers is reported as 0.92 that for non-native English speakers is 0.85. Statement measures tend to comprise more words, and hence consume more research instrument space, than lexical measures. Respondents are asked the extent to which they, for example, talk to a lot of different people at parties or often feel uncomfortable around others. While some statement-based measures of extroversion-slash-introversion have similarly acceptable psychometric properties in North American populations to lexical measures, their generally emic development makes them less suited to use in other populations. For example, statements asking about talkativeness in parties are hard to answer meaningfully by those who do not attend parties, as Americans are assumed to do. Moreover, the sometimes colloquial North American language of statements makes them less suited to use outside America. For instance, 
statements like keep in the background and know how to captivate people are sometimes hard for non-native English speakers to understand except in a literal sense. Hans Eisenk described extroversion-introversion as the degree to which a person is outgoing and interactive with other people. These behavioral differences are presumed to be the result of underlying differences in brain physiology. Eisenk combined cortical inhibition and excitation with the ascending reticular activation system, a pathway located in the brainstem. Extroverts seek excitement and social activity in an effort to heighten their arousal level, whereas introverts tend to avoid social situations in an effort to keep such arousal to a minimum. Eisenk designated extroversion as one of three major traits in his PEN model of personality, which also includes psychoticism and neuroticism. Extroversion Eisenk originally suggested that extroversion was a combination of two major tendencies, impulsiveness and sociability. He later added several other more specific traits, namely liveliness, activity level, and excitability. These traits are further linked in his personality hierarchy to even more specific habitual responses, such as partying on the weekend. Eisenk compared this trait to the four temperaments of ancient medicine, with choleric and sanguine temperaments equating to extroversion, and melancholic and phlegmatic temperaments equating to introversion. The relative importance of nature versus environment in determining the level of extroversion is controversial and the focus of many studies. Twin studies have found a genetic component of 39% to 58%. In terms of the environmental component, the shared family environment appears to be far less important than individual environmental factors that are not shared between siblings. Eisenk proposed that extroversion was caused by variability in cortical arousal. He hypothesized that introverts are characterized by higher levels of activity than extroverts and so are chronically more cortically aroused than extroverts. That extroverts require more external stimulation than introverts has been interpreted as evidence for this hypothesis. Other evidence of the stimulation hypothesis is that introverts salivate more than extroverts in response to a drop of lemon juice. This is due to increased activity in their reticular activating system, which responds to stimuli like food or social contact. Extroversion has been linked to higher sensitivity of the mesolimbic dopamine system to potentially rewarding stimuli. This in part explains the high levels of positive affect found in extroverts, since they will more intensely feel the excitement of a potential reward. One consequence of this is that extroverts can more easily learn the contingencies for positive reinforcement, since the reward itself is experienced as greater. One study found that introverts have more blood flow in the frontal lobes of their brain and the anterior or frontal thalamus, which are areas dealing with internal processing, such as planning and problem solving. Extroverts have more blood flow in the anterior cingulate gyrus, temporal lobes, and posterior thalamus, which are involved in sensory and emotional experience. This study and other research indicates that introversion-extroversion is related to individual differences in brain function. A study on regional brain volume found a positive correlation between introversion and gray matter volume in the right prefrontal cortex and right temporoparietal junction, as well as a positive correlation between introversion and total white matter volume. Extroversion has also been linked to physiological factors such as respiration, through its association with surgency. Introversion Ambiversion Extroverts and introverts have a variety of behavioral differences. According to one study, extroverts tend to wear more decorative clothing, whereas introverts prefer practical, 
comfortable clothes. Extroverts are more likely to prefer more upbeat, conventional, and energetic music than introverts. Personality also influences how people arrange their work areas. In general, extroverts decorate their offices more, keep their doors open, keep extra chairs nearby, and are more likely to put dishes of candy on their desks. These are attempts to invite co-workers and encourage interaction. Introverts, in contrast, decorate less and tend to arrange their workspace to discourage social interaction. Relative Prevalence Measurement Isenck's Theory Biological Factors Behavior Despite these differences, a meta-analysis of 15 experience sampling studies has suggested that there is a great deal of overlap in the way that extroverts and introverts behave. In these studies, participants used mobile devices to report how extrovert they were acting at multiple times during their daily lives. Fleeson and Gallagher found that extroverts regularly behave in an introverted way, and introverts regularly behave in an extroverted way. Indeed, there was more within-person variability than between-person variability in extrovert behaviors. The key feature that distinguishes extroverts and introverts was that extroverts tend to act moderately extrovert about 5-10% more often than introverts. From this perspective, extroverts and introverts are not fundamentally different. Rather, an extrovert is just someone who acts more extrovert more often, suggesting that extroversion is more about what one does than what one has. Additionally, a study by Lipa found evidence for the extent to which individuals present themselves in a different way. This is called expressive behavior, and it is dependent upon the individual's motivation and ability to control that behavior. Lipa examined 68 students who were asked to role-play by pretending to teach a math class. The students' level of extroversion and introversion were rated based on their external-slash-expressive behaviors such as stride length, graphic expansiveness, the percentage of time they spent talking, the amount of time they spent making eye contact, and the total time of each teaching session. This study found that actual introverts were perceived and judged as having more extrovert-looking expressive behaviors because they were higher in terms of their self-monitoring. This means that the introverts consciously put more effort into presenting a more extrovert, and rather socially desirable, version of themselves. Thus, Individuals are able to regulate and modify behavior based on their environmental situations. Humans are complex and unique, and because introversion-extroversion varies along a continuum, individuals may have a mixture of both orientations. A person who acts introverted in one situation may act extroverted in another and people can learn to act in counter-dispositional ways in certain situations. For example, Brian Little's free trait theory suggests that people can take on free traits, behaving in ways that may not be their first nature, but can strategically advance projects that are important to them. Together, this presents an optimistic view of what extroversion is. Rather than being fixed and stable, Individuals vary in their extrovert behaviors across different moments, and can choose to act extrovert to advance important personal projects or even increase their happiness, as mentioned above. Implications Acknowledging that introversion and extroversion are normal variants of behavior can help in self-acceptance and understanding of others. For example, an extrovert can accept his slash her introverted partner's need for space, while an introvert can acknowledge his slash her extrovert partner's need for social interaction. Researchers have found a correlation between extroversion and self-reported happiness. 
That is, more extrovert people tend to report higher levels of happiness than introverts. Other research has shown that being instructed to act in an extrovert manner leads to increases in positive affect, even for people who are trait-level introverts. This does not mean that introverts are unhappy. Extroverts simply report experiencing more positive emotions, whereas introverts tend to be closer to neutral. This may be because extroversion is socially preferable in contemporary Western culture and thus introverts feel less desirable. In addition to the research on happiness, other studies have found that extroverts tend to report higher levels of self-esteem than introverts. Others suggest that such results reflect socio-cultural bias in the survey itself. Dr. David Myers has claimed that happiness is a matter of possessing three traits, self-esteem, optimism, and extroversion. Myers bases his conclusions on studies that report extroverts to be happier. These findings have been questioned in light of the fact that the happiness prompts given to the study's subjects, such as I like to be with others and I'm fun to be with only measure happiness among extroverts. Also, according to Carl Jung, introverts acknowledge more readily their psychological needs and problems, whereas extroverts tend to be oblivious to them because they focus more on the outer world. Although extroversion is perceived as socially desirable in Western culture, it is not always an advantage. For example, Extrovert youths are more likely to engage in antisocial or delinquent behavior. In line with this, emerging evidence suggests that the trait of extroversion may also be related to that of psychopathy. Conversely, while introversion is perceived as less socially desirable, it is strongly associated with positive traits such as intelligence and giftedness. For many years, Researchers have found that introverts tend to be more successful in academic environments, which extroverts may find boring. Research shows that behavioral immune system, the psychological processes that infer infection risk from perceptual cues and respond to these perceptual cues through the activation of aversive emotions, may influence gregariousness. Although extroversion is associated with many positive outcomes like higher levels of happiness, those extrovert people are also likely to be exposed to interpersonally transmitted infectious disease as they tend to contact more people. When individuals are more vulnerable to infection, the cost of being social will be relatively greater. Therefore, people are less extroversive when they feel vulnerable and vice versa. Although neither introversion nor extroversion is pathological, psychotherapists can take temperament into account when treating clients. Clients may respond better to different types of treatment depending on where they fall on the introversion-extroversion spectrum. Teachers can also consider temperament when dealing with their pupils, for example acknowledging that introverted children need more encouragement to speak in class while extrovert children may grow restless during long periods of quiet study. Some claim that Americans live in an extrovert society that rewards extrovert behavior and rejects introversion. This is because the U.S. is currently a culture of external personality whereas in some other cultures people are valued for their inner selves and their moral rectitude. Other cultures, such as Japan and regions where Orthodox Christianity, Buddhism, Sufism etc. prevail, prize introversion. These cultural differences predict individuals' happiness in that people who score higher in extroversion are happier, on average in particularly extrovert cultures and vice versa. Regional Variation Researchers have found that people who live on islands tend to be less extrovert than those living on the mainland, 
and that people whose ancestors had inhabited the island for 20 generations tend to be less extrovert than more recent arrivals. Furthermore, people who emigrate from islands to the mainland tend to be more extrovert than people that stay on islands, and those that immigrate to islands. In the United States, Researchers have found that people living in the Midwestern states of North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois score higher than the U.S. average on extroversion. Utah and the southeastern states of Florida and Georgia also score high on this personality trait. The most introverted states in the United States are Maryland, New Hampshire, Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and Vermont. People who live in the northwestern states of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming are also relatively introverted. Extroversion, Introversion, and Happiness As earlier stated, Extroverts are often found to have higher levels of happiness and positive affect than introverts. An influential review article concluded that personality, specifically extroversion, and emotional stability, was the best predictor of subjective well-being. As examples, Argyle and L.U. found that the trait of extroversion, as measured by extroversion scale of the Eisenk Personality Questionnaire, was positively and significantly correlated with happiness, as measured by the Oxford Happiness Inventory. Using the same happiness and extroversion scales, Hills and Argyle found that happiness was again significantly correlated with extroversion. Also, the study by Emmons and Diener showed that extroversion correlates positively and significantly with positive affect but not with negative affect. Similar results were found in a large longitudinal study by Diener, Sandvik, Pavit, and Fujita, which assessed 14,407 participants from 100 areas of continental United States. Using the abbreviated General Well-Being Schedule, which tapped positive and negative affects, and Costa and McRae's short version of the NEOS Extraversion Scale, the authors reported that extroverts experienced greater well-being at two points in time, during which data were collected, first between 1971 and 1975, and later between 1981 and 1984. Furthermore, Larson and Ketelar showed that extroverts respond more to positive affect than to negative affect since they exhibit more positive effect reactivity to the positive effect induction, yet they do not react more negatively to the negative effect induction. The instrumental view proposes that personality traits give rise to conditions and actions, which have effective consequences, and thus generate individual differences in emotionality. Instrumental View Personality trait as a cause of higher sociability. Social activity hypothesis. According to the instrumental view, one explanation for greater subjective well being among extroverts could be that extroversion helps in the creation of life circumstances, which promote high levels of positive affect. Specifically, the personality trait of extroversion is seen as a facilitator of more social interactions, since the low cortical arousal among extroverts results in them seeking more social situations in order to increase their arousal. According to the social activity hypothesis, more frequent participation in social situations creates more frequent, and higher levels, of positive affect. Therefore, it is believed that since extroverts are characterized as more sociable than introverts, they also possess higher levels of positive affect brought on by social interactions. Specifically, the results of Fernham and Bruin's study suggest that extroverts enjoy and participate more in social activities than introverts, and as a result extroverts report higher level of happiness. Also. 
in the study of Argyle and LU extroverts were found to be less likely to avoid participation in noisy social activities, and to be more likely to participate in social activities such as, party games, jokes, or going to the cinema. Similar results were reported by Diener, Larson, and Emmons who found that extroverts seek social situations more often than introverts, especially when engaging in recreational activities. However, a variety of findings contradict the claims of the social activity hypothesis. Firstly, it was found that extroverts were happier than introverts even when alone. Specifically, extroverts tend to be happier regardless of whether they live alone or with others, or whether they live in a vibrant city or quiet rural environment. Similarly, a study by Diener, Sandvik, Pavit, and Fujita showed that although extroverts chose social jobs relatively more frequently than non-social jobs compared to introverts, they were happier than introverts regardless of whether their occupations had social or non-social character. Secondly, it was found that extroverts only sometimes reported greater amounts of social activity than introverts but in general extroverts and introverts do not differ in the quantity of their socialization. Similar finding was reported by Srivastava, Angelo, and Valarus, who found that extroverts and introverts both enjoy participating in social interactions, but extroverts participate socially more. Thirdly, studies have shown that both extroverts and introverts participate in social relations, but that the quality of this participation differs. The more frequent social participation among extroverts could be explained by the fact that extroverts know more people, but those people are not necessarily their close friends, whereas introverts, when participating in social interactions, are more selective and have only few close friends with whom they have special relationships. Yet another explanation of the high correlation between extroversion and happiness comes from the study by Ashton, Lee, and Panunan. They suggested that the core element of extroversion is a tendency to behave in ways that attract, hold, and enjoy social attention, and not reward sensitivity. They claimed that one of the fundamental qualities of social attention is its potential of being rewarding. Therefore, if a person shows positive emotions of enthusiasm, energy, and excitement, that person is seen favorably by others and he or she gains others' attention. This favorable reaction from others likely encourages extroverts to engage in further extrovert behavior. Ashton, Lee, and Panunan's study showed that their measure of social attention, the social attention scale, was much more highly correlated with extroversion than were measures of reward sensitivity. Temperamental view is based on the notion that there is a direct link between people's personality traits and their sensitivity to positive and negative affects. The effective reactivity model states that the strength of a person's reactions to affect relevant events are caused by people's differences in affect. This model is based on the reinforcement sensitivity theory by Jeffrey Allen Gray, which states that people with stronger behavioral activation system are high in reward responsiveness and are predisposed to the personality trait of extroversion, while people with a stronger behavioral inhibition system are lower in reward responsiveness and are more predisposed to personality trait of neuroticism and introversion. Therefore, Extroverts are seen as having a temperamental predisposition to positive affects since positive mood induction has a greater effect on them than on introverts, thus extroverts are more prone to react to pleasant effects. For example, Gable, Race, and Elliot found in two consecutive studies that people with more sensitive bis reported higher levels of average negative affect while people with more sensitive bass reported higher levels of positive affect. 
Also Zelensky and Larson found that people with more sensitive bass reported more positive emotions during the positive mood induction, while people with more sensitive bass reported more negative emotions during the negative mood induction. The social reactivity theory alleges that all humans, whether they like it or not, are required to participate in social situations. Since extroverts prefer engaging in social interactions more than introverts, they also derive more positive affect from such situations than introverts do. The support for this theory comes from work of Brian R. Little, who popularized concept of restorative niches. Little claimed that life often requires people to participate in social situations, and since acting social is out of character for introverts, it was shown to harm their well-being. Therefore, one way to preserve introverts' well-being is for them to recharge as often as possible in places where they can return to their true selves places Little calls restorative niches. However, it was also found that extroverts did not respond stronger to social situations than introverts, nor did they report bigger boosts of positive affect during such interactions. Another possible explanation for more happiness among extroverts comes from the fact that extroverts are able to better regulate their affective states. This means that in ambiguous situations extroverts show a slower decrease of positive affect, and, as a result, they maintained a more positive affect balance than introverts. Extroverts may also choose activities that facilitate happiness more than introverts when anticipating difficult tasks. According to the set point model, Levels of positive and negative affects are more or less fixed within each individual, hence, after a positive or negative event, people's moods tend to go back to the preset level. According to the set point model, extroverts experience more happiness because their preset level of positive affect is set higher than the preset point of positive affect in introverts. Therefore extroverts require less positive reinforcement in order to feel happy. A study by Peter Cuppins showed that extroverts and introverts engage in different behaviors when feeling pleasant, which may explain underestimation of the frequency and intensity of happiness exhibited by introverts. Specifically, Cuppins found that arousal and pleasantness are positively correlated for extroverts which means that pleasant feelings are more likely to be accompanied by high arousal for extroverts. On the other hand, arousal and pleasantness are negatively correlated for introverts, resulting in introverts exhibiting low arousal when feeling pleasant. In other words, if everything is going well in an extrovert's life, which is a source of pleasant feelings, Extroverts see such situation as an opportunity to engage in active behavior and goal pursuit, which brings about an active, aroused pleasant state. When everything is going well for introverts, they see it as an opportunity to let down their guard, resulting in them feeling relaxed and content. Though extroversion has consistently been shown to have a strong correlation with happiness and well-being, these findings are complicated by the presence of other personality traits that act as strong indicators of happiness. In multiple studies, neuroticism has been shown to have an equal, if not larger, impact on happiness and subjective well-being than extroversion. One study classified school children into four categories based on their scores in assessments of extroversion and emotional stability. The results showed no significant difference between the happiness levels of stable introverts and stable extroverts, while unstable extroverts and introverts both demonstrated significantly less happiness than their counterparts. In this study, neuroticism appeared to be the more salient factor for overall well-being. Likewise, in later studies, 
researchers used assessment scales to test for categories such as self-esteem and life goal orientation, which they had positively correlated with happiness. Participants' responses to these scales suggested that neuroticism actually had a larger impact than extroversion in measures of well-being. Though extroversion and neuroticism seem to have the largest effect on personal happiness, other big five personality factors have also been shown to correlate with happiness and subjective well-being. For example, one study showed that conscientiousness and agreeableness correlated about 0.20 with subjective well-being. While the effect of these traits was not as strong as extroversion or neuroticism, it is clear that they still have some impact on happiness outcomes. Similarly, interactions between extroversion, neuroticism, and conscientiousness have demonstrated significant impacts on subjective well-being. In one study, researchers used three scale to assess subjective well-being. They found that extroversion only served as a predictor for one assessment, in conjunction with neuroticism, while the other two assessment outcomes were better predicted by conscientiousness and neuroticism. In addition to the importance of including other factors in happiness assessments, this study also demonstrates the manner in which an operational definition of well-being changes whether extroversion emerges as a salient predictive factor. There is also evidence that other non-trait elements of personality may correlate with happiness. For instance, one study demonstrated that various features of one's goals, such as progress towards important goals or conflicts between them, can affect both emotional and cognitive well-being. Several other researchers have also suggested that, at least in more individualistic cultures, having a coherent sense of one's personality is positively related to well-being. Thus, focusing solely on extroversion or even extroversion and neuroticism is likely to provide an incomplete picture of the relationship between happiness and personality. In addition, one's culture may also influence happiness and overall subjective well-being. The overall level of happiness fluctuates from culture to culture, as does preferred expression of happiness. Comparing various international surveys across countries reveals that different nations, and different ethnic groups within nations, exhibit differences in average life satisfaction. For example, one researcher found that between 1958 and 1987, Japanese life satisfaction fluctuated around 6 on a 10-point scale, while Denmark's fluctuated around 8. Comparing ethnic groups within the United States, another study found that European Americans reported being significantly happier with their lives than Asian Americans. Researchers have hypothesized a number of factors that could be responsible for these differences between countries including national differences in overall income levels, selfing biases and self-enhancement, and approach and avoidance orientations. Taken together, these findings suggest that while extroversion-introversion does have a strong correlation with happiness, it does not stand alone as a sole predictor of subjective well-being and that other factors must be accounted for when trying to determine the correlates of happiness. Social Attention Theory Temperamental View Effective Reactivity Model Social Reactivity Theory Effective Regulation The Set Point Model aka Effect Level Model Pleasure Arousal Relation Complications to the extroversion happiness correlation Neuroticism and extroversion Other big five factors and extroversion Other contributing personality factors Culture